Welcome back folks to a brand new video. Now with so many incredible countries from around the world, it can be tough to decide where to visit next. But in this video, we're gonna showcase 24 of some of the best destinations from around the world. And hopefully you'll get some ideas on where you wanna to travel to on your next holiday. So we start this video with the US, where the spotlight shines on the captivating state of Oregon. Now most visitors arrive in Oregon to spend a few days in Portland, yet it seems tourists miss out on what lies beyond. But if you escape the cities, you will find high deserts, glistening lakes, lush towering forests, and long silhouettes of mountain peaks. With such an abundant slice of American wilderness, only adventure awaits. Number 23, Morocco. Now, Morocco is one of Africa's most beautiful corners, from the Atlas Mountains to the Sahara Desert. Via its endless coasts that straddle the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. So you can visit the beauty of its architecture and craftsmanship, such as in Marrakesh, with its imperial medinas and palaces, or you can visit the Mediterranean coastal towns like Essaouira. You see, the beauty of Moroccan heritage is visible everywhere in the diversity of its people, the food, and the arts. Singapore. Now this country has a glitzy reputation, a diamond-shaped island in one of Southeast Asia's most celebrated destinations, and nestled on the tip of the Malay Peninsula, the city-state has quite an impressive shelf full of trophies for such a small size. Not only is Singapore one of the biggest shopping havens, but even its flagship airline is also the best in the world. And by the way, just to top it off, the city is one of the greenest out there, with nearly half of the land allocated to parks and gardens. While the density of its wildlife is much lower than other parts of Africa, Namibia makes up for it with its breathtaking desert landscapes. In the north of the country lies Etosha National Park, which is its most popular safari destination. The best time to visit are the dry months, when the animals gather at water and there are plenty, such as elephants, giraffes, lions, and it's possible to see black rhinos too. The Etosha Pan, which is the focal point of the park, is a salt flat, where mammals and birds such as flamingos all gather. So if you do want to get there, you can drive up from the capital Windhoek. And the other options reveal some of Namibia's huge open landscapes. And the best base camp is right on the edge of Itosha National Park, the Ongava Tented Camp, which is in a private reserve. Now we come to France. Now I have a very long video coming to you at the start of January, the first week, so don't forget to come back to that one. But all eyes will be on Paris this year as the city prepares to host the Summer Olympics. You have the reconstruction of the Notre Dame and this year's much publicized bedbugs outbreak that happened in the country, but apparently it happens all the time. Beyond Paris, there are other adventures such as the chic French Riviera. But point to note, the overseas territory of French Polynesia is actually going to host the Olympic surfing competitions this year. How random is that? But overall, just remember, France might be quite expensive. So my advice is to visit straight after. 
Number 19. Sri Lanka. So this South Asian nation packs a punch into a tiny teardrop-shaped island. Think about high elevation tea plantations, national parks and friendly surf towns. You see, the country has worked hard in recent years to secure its spot as a global tourism contender and to regain your trust as visitors with its trademark hospitality and its warm nature. Austria. Vienna has long been a favourite stop on many city breaks in Europe. Great food and the city's famous coffee house scene. And trust me, the apple strudel folks. Now outside the capital, you will still find the jewels like Salzburg and Hauschstadt, which will forever be a popular spot. But other destinations are still bubbling on the surface. So don't miss out on those mountain lakes, especially with those epic hiking trails. South Africa has always been a favourite stop for many international travellers, and it's becoming increasingly accessible thanks to more new direct routes. So I think visiting South Africa would be a great idea this year, especially if you head to Kruger National Park. Not only is it one of the best, but definitely the most organised. Number 16, the United Kingdom. Now, thanks to bloody Brexit and a new king, it's safe to say that the UK hasn't seen such an intense period of transition. But that shouldn't affect your desire to see the many different destinations that we have right here. In the south of England, you have the Cotswolds. Or the Jurassic Coast, or even the beautiful Cornwall. But up in the north of England, Yorkshire is one of the best regions to explore, thanks to the many adventures that await in places like York, or the typical villages you will find there. But of course, beyond England, you have the beautiful Scotland. No wonder so many films are made there. As well as the maritime history in Northern Ireland. Germany. With the fairy tale castles, charming small towns, and those festive Christmas markets, Germany has always been a large tourist magnet. Whether you're exploring by train, river cruise, or those long road trips, you have the buzzy neighborhoods in Munich, like the meatpacking district, but of course, you have the classics just as beautiful as they always have been. Number 14, Croatia. Now I was lucky enough to first visit in 2011, but the secret's out. This Balkan country may have been off the beaten path for quite a while, but it's rapidly gaining in popularity every single year, thanks to the increased direct flights, plenty of cruises, and especially that TV series Game of Thrones. 
to Croatia at the moment is feeling those growing pains of its success, like Dubrovnik and Split becoming every bit as over-touristed as Venice or Amsterdam. But don't worry, because there are plenty of areas around the country such as these. Number 13. Iceland Long celebrated as a rugged adventure outpost, Iceland is the kind of edge of the world place where your trip might be interrupted by a volcanic eruption or mini earthquakes, like you've seen recently this week, but it's still worth the wait. I cannot begin to tell you how amazing the landscapes are and extremely varied. Forget the golden circle, which becomes increasingly crowded, and head out towards the east of the country for places like this. Number 12. Australia Now tourists around the world will never stop loving Sydney and Melbourne and not forgetting the Great Barrier Reef. But the theme here for Australian tourism in the past few years has been a resounding but there's so much more out there. So my advice would be to check out Western Australia's remote Kimberley region. It's easily one of the best places to go and there's a newly launched Aboriginal cultural expedition. Number 11. Turkey. Istanbul has always sat at the crossroads of the world where the tiny thin ribbon of the Bosporus divides Asia from Europe and East from West. And now it's taken its position to new heights, folks, especially after the 2019 International Airport. So there are so many visitors pouring in to the capital. But further afield, you will find so much joy, whether it's the sandy beaches to beautiful experiences in the sky. Number 10, Switzerland. With beautiful green valleys full of cows, snow-capped peaks, and the glitzy ski resorts, Switzerland is the kind of place that most people think that they know. But this country in the heart of Europe is definitely worth another look. For example, you can visit the largest city, Zurich, which is notoriously expensive, but it never seems to get enough credit for its progressive outlook. There are plenty of music scenes and art scenes. So be sure to take another look at Switzerland before you head straight to Lauterbrunnen and Grindelwald. Number 9. Norway 
Now, when it comes to Norway, can you believe that Oslo has spent the past several years getting out of the shadow of its grander Scandinavian peers like Stockholm and Copenhagen? I personally would never have thought that. But the capital city is just a mere small getaway compared to all the explorations you can do in the country, especially checking out the beautiful fjords. Number eight, Malta. Now what's good about Malta is it's year round pleasant weather. I think it's a top choice for 2024, especially for families and tourists alike seeking more of an escape from the central areas of Europe. And if you're into history, just look at it. It's like an open air museum. And for me, Valletta seems like an incomparable destination. Number seven, Portugal. Now this country has spent the past decade transforming from a budget-minded underdog type of destination to now a massive and major player that can easily rival the likes of Spain and Italy. You know, Portugal is brimming with places to go, especially if you love your food. But you still have Portugal's favorites, like the hillsides of the Douro Valley, the beach towns of the Alentejo region, and of course the surfer havens of the Algarve. But don't forget the volcanic landscapes of the Azores. Number six, Spain. Now, Spain has long been a solid choice for a holiday destination. You have beautiful cities like Madrid with plenty of rooftop bars. You have Barcelona, the pickpocket capital city of Europe, and of course, the tried and tested beach resorts throughout Spain. But I think you should head to the Andalusia region this year. It packs a punch. It has everything for every type of traveler. You have the birthplace of flamenco, great weather all year round, and a lot, a lot of history. So hopefully when I do cover Andalusia, you might be surprised by some of the places that you can visit and it might entice you to visit next year. Number five, New Zealand. Now, ever since we explored Middle Earth in the Lord of the Rings, you can imagine that the island has almost a mythical beauty about it. From the mountain lakes, the sweeping fjords, to the misty rainforests, and the diverse valleys. New Zealand has opened the eyes of so many people around the world. And I still think that next year will be even better. Number four, Ireland. Now, if you're looking for the ultimate holiday destination with warm hospitality, touch of magic, castles, lush landscapes, and fireplaced pubs, then you can't go wrong by visiting Ireland. Dublin is becoming a very big tech city. But considering the rest of the country, you have the rugged landscapes of the wild Atlantic Way. And it invites you to hire a car and to take a long journey beyond the iconic landmarks to the heart of Ireland's heritage. Number 
Number three, Greece. Every year, Greece is attracting record-breaking numbers, such as the ever-popular Athens. But we keep coming back to the crystal waters to some of our favourite islands, such as the picture postcard Santorini and Mykonos. And not forgetting the ever-popular Crete. But the good thing about Greece is there's more and more places to venture out to under-the-radar places like Paros and car-free Hydra. Number two, Italy. Now there ain't enough days in the year to uncover all the dolce vita that Italy has to offer. So beyond the hotspots in Florence, Venice, Milan and Rome, which you can skip next year, the country is still blessed with the many villages and underrated cities to explore and really enjoy. Or you can check out Bergamo and Brescia, two former rivals that share the title of Italian Capital of Culture for this year. And finally, number one, Japan. Now Japan could find itself very unlucky when its turn for the Summer Olympics fell during the international pandemic. But luckily, the country has reopened for visa-free tourism and you'll find incredible restaurants, ultra-relaxing onsens, of course the Shinto temples, the cherry blossoms that usually happen in springtime around the April-May region, and of course the impeccable, efficient high-speed trains, which are so handy for you to explore the rest of the country.